Ready. Awesome, man. All right, so today's call is about uh, all about upsells. Specifically, we're gonna go over some of the common mistakes that people make with upsells. Um, this is by far, I would say, the biggest area that people leave money on the table uh, when it comes to their offers, uh, especially really smart marketers. Uh, a lot of the work I do with people is fixing their upsells so they can get higher average order value um, and so they can scale offers. So we'll, we'll go into why upsells are so important and I'm gonna show you exactly kind of how to do that and how to make your upsells convert better uh, and kind of show you exactly what I said, like the mistakes are. Before we kind of dive into that, um, for the people on the call who do not know me, uh, my name is Justin Goff and I pretty much specialize in upsells and AOV and kind of funnel strategy now. I used to write a ton of front end copy and stuff like that. I, I kind of realized over the last couple of years that I'm actually a lot better at the upsell and AOV and funnel strategy, all that type of stuff that really makes an offer work. Um, it just tends to work a lot better with, with the way I think. Um, and, I, and I help, uh, sorry, I said AOV, average order value. So that's how much a customer spends with you on the transaction. Um, so yeah, I, I've kind of learned over the years from testing a ton of different upsells, exactly what works, what doesn't. Uh, I mean, you could kind of tell people what works, what doesn't, but you never really know until you test. Uh, and a lot of data has gone into kind of this presentation that I'm going to share with you today. Uh, literally, probably millions of dollars worth of split tests uh, that I'm going to share with you. So you're kind of getting the results of uh, <laughs> someone else's hard work and someone else's money spent uh, that you'll be able to implement yourself uh, to get your offers converting better. Uh, so Stefan George is on the call with me. Stefan's my partner in a program called Copy Accelerator, where we coach uh, copywriters, we coach business owners, we basically mentor them, teach them how to get their offers working on cold traffic. Stefan is, in my opinion, the number one copywriter in the world right now. Um, he he specializes more in front end copy, but also is really good at cranking out offers and putting upsells together that uh, scale really really high on on cold traffic. Um, anything else you want to add? Yeah, just um, that this is super important. Like I have, for example, my own internal offer right now and actually shared it, I think a little bit on one of the calls we did, but um, yeah, we're doing a couple hundred front ends a day, at least like 200, uh, honestly 500 plus front ends a day. And like right now the average order value for that's maybe $140 and uh, it's like a lower price point, but I know basically through upsells and doing it correctly, like I'm like, oh, I can definitely get the average order value up to $228 just on upsells and actually $218. But, and I'm like, I know that from experience and from learning from Justin and all that, there's a bunch of stuff we need to change, but giving me that power, I mean, that's a massive difference. It's the difference of just millions of dollars in profit over the course of a year. And even if you're not doing that high of volume, it still is very significant. And if you're a copywriter on this call and you know, you're like, well, I don't own an offer. Why do I care? The better you can make your upsells for your clients, the more they'll pay you. You can specialize in upsells, which is less like work, basically, honestly. Um, and, you know, just generally the more the happier your clients are, the more likely they are to hire you on repeat because you've gotten them results. And so really understanding upsells and not just sort of dialing in with the same thing that most people are doing, which is not really that good compared to what Justin teaches, can make a huge difference in your career. So I just want to make, you know, kind of that point as just goes in just how important uh, this stuff really is. It's, it's really underlooked, but it's extremely valuable. Yep. Uh, so in terms of questions, I know some of you guys are already popping questions in the chat. That's fine. Uh, we will do a little Q and A at the end. So if you have specific questions on your offer or something like that, uh, or anything we kind of talk about, uh, we will answer it at the end. If there's something that comes up that I'm not explaining well enough, feel free to pop it in the, in the chat and I'll try to answer that in there. So, um, with that said, we're going to get started. A uh, couple rules for the call. Uh, please keep yourself on mute. Uh, Stefan and I will be the only ones talking until we get to the Q&A part. At the Q&A part, uh, you'll be able to unmute yourself and ask questions, but until then, keep yourself on mute. Otherwise, you have multiple people who are talking and noises in the background. It just ruins the call for everybody. Um, use the chat. Feel free to pop everything in there. Uh, questions you have, if you need me to explain something better, feel free to pop that in there. Like I said, specific questions about maybe your offer or about something else, please hold those to the end. We'll do Q&A then. Uh, and then the last thing is just, if you're disrupting the call in any way, if you're being an asshole in the chat, if you are keep going on, off on mute, we're just going to block you and you're going to be kicked off the call. So uh, in order to keep it 
uh, orderly for everyone else and not ruin the experience. Uh, just make sure you're not interrupting everyone else on the call and ruining their experience. So let's dive in with what we're talking about. Let me pull my presentation up and share my screen. Can you guys see this? Yes, awesome. Sweet. Oh, one other thing I wanted to mention, uh, I didn't mention this in the emails, but we are giving away a super valuable free gift at the end of this call. So if you want to stick around and get the details on that, uh, be well worth your time. So. This will actually probably be a shorter call than the last couple. Um, it's a little more straight to the point. There's not as much stuff to talk about, but the stuff we are talking about, like I said, highly, highly valuable. Ah, well, now I can't see anything. Hmm. All right, well, let's go this way. So two upsell mistakes uh, that are costing you money. Let's just start at base one for people on the call who don't really understand what upsells are. I just want to make sure everybody understands that upsell basically, as you see at this example, if somebody bought a keto diet book on the front end, that would be the main product. They go to the checkout, they get ready to check out, they pay for the order. And then the next page would be maybe trying to sell them a keto supplement or something. That's an upsell. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. And I'm going to be talking about a bunch of different examples from tons of different in industries as well. So. Let's talk about why upsells are so important. So we, we talked about this a little bit already, but I want to expand on this so you can really kind of understand why they're so critical. So higher AOV and AOV stands for average order value is critical to scaling your offer. So if your AOV is not high, you might be able to make like 10 sales a day. But if you have a really high, high AOV, you're going to be able to buy more traffic. Uh, so then you can make 100 sales a day or 300 sales a day or even 1,000 sales a day if you get it get it really going good. Um, so having that high average order value is super critical to be able to scale, being able to scale and make more sales. And that's really what we're after making more sales every day, especially from cold traffic. And to, in order to do that, in order to pay more for traffic, you have to have that average order value there on day one. Uh, so like someone who has an average order value, like on some of Stefan's supplements, he has average order values in the 300, like $300 range. Compare that to someone else who has a supplement where the average order value is like $80. Stefan can pay three times more, damn near four times more for the traffic compared to that person. That's really what you're trying to do. And that's how you win this game. Pretty much whoever can pay more to acquire customers ends up winning. Um, that's like if you took nothing else from this call and just understood that for the first time in your life, that would be a complete game changer for a lot of people. So, and that kind of goes into what I talk about in the second part. It is insanely competitive nowadays with who you're competing with to buy traffic. Um, if you're buying traffic against people like Gundry and Agora and Four Patriots and all the other great, great companies in the direct response space, you have to be really good because they're really good at this too. Uh, there's no way you can compete with the best copywriters and the best marketers in the world without having really good upsells. And then the last part is really getting more money on day one is critical. So um, let's say you spend $1,000 on ads today and you bring back $1,000 today. That's awesome because you kind of broke even and you acquired a bunch of customers by breaking even. That's really what you're kind of looking to do. Um, but if you're not getting, like a lot of companies, they might spend 1000 today and they might only bring back $300 today. And then they bring back more of that money over the next like 30 days or 60 days. Then eventually they break even over like 60 days, which is fine. And that works. The issue is you have to have a lot more money uh, to fund that, to keep your ad buys going and all that. So you're really going in the hole and floating money for a long, long, long time. Uh, and so if you can get more money on day one with better upsells, that, that's really what you're shooting for. Does that make sense to everybody before we move on? Give me a give me a yes in the chat if it did. Okay. So let's go right into upsell to mistake number one. Uh, you're not selling the right product on your upsell. This one is so, so important. Literally, um, I'm, I'm going to dive in and show you exactly what I mean by this, but 
basically most people make the mistake of their upsell not being relevant enough to what the customer bought on the front end. Um, this by far is the most important thing in terms of how well your upsell is going to convert is how relevant it is to what they bought on the front end. Now here's the thing. Most people think what they're selling on their upsell actually is relevant to what they sold on the front end. And a lot of times it's not. So I'm, I'm going to give you some examples of those. And actually, let me, let me explain on this one more time. So getting the product right is literally more important than the copy. It's more important than the headline. It's more important than the price. It's more important than whether or not it's video or long form is literally the most important part of the upsell. Um, I put a little note down here that said this tip, tip alone has literally been responsible for millions of dollars in sales for me and my clients. Uh, and I, I learned this one the hard way because for years I had a bunch of upsells where I did what a lot of people did. I would put out an offer, not really know what I was going to sell as the upsell. And it was more like, okay, what products do we have laying around that we could put into this upsell? And then we put a product in there and it would do okay. Maybe it would convert at like 12, 13, 14, 15%. Uh, and then we kept trying to beat that. So we'd try to write new copy. We would try new videos. We would try new headlines. We would test new prices and we would get bumps and we, we would beat it. But the issue is that offer is simply not good enough. So it can only go so far. So maybe we took it from like 12 to 18% or 12 to 20%. Yet when we actually changed the product we were selling on that first upsell, we took it from like 12% to 40%. So you can see right there, that's the difference between having the actual right product there and having a product that's like eh, mediocre, kind of average. Does that make sense to everybody? Jeff said, boom, yes. Give me, give me a chat. It's, yeah, pop something in the chat if that makes sense to you. I want to make sure I'm hammering this home because it's, it's so, so important. Yep. We're going to give examples right here because uh, I, like me, I'm sure a lot of you learn by examples uh, and you'll be able to see with a bunch of these examples, I'm going to share the difference between an offer that kind of works as an upsell and an offer that kicks ass as an upsell. So let's look at examples. All right. So we're going to play a little game here. Which upsell do you think will win? So here's the situation on the front end, a customer bought an ebook for $39.95 on fixing your hormones so that they can lose weight. Um, which upsell do you think would be the best fit for this? So just to reiterate, they bought an ebook, 39 bucks, how to fix your hormones so you can lose weight. So option A is done for you meal plans for hormone friendly meals. Option B is hormone friendly workouts that accelerate your weight loss. Option C is a supplement that helps accelerate weight loss by fixing hormones. And D is resistance band, do at home, hormone friendly workouts. Pop in the chat what you think would work. So we got a lot of C, we have an A and a C. Awesome. So lots of lots of guesses for A and C, um, which you're you're dead on. So in my experience, the supplement is going to do the best here. Uh, which would be option C. And then the done for you meal plans would probably be second. Um, and kind of the reasoning behind that is the supplement is promises two result, two big things. It's going to give you results faster and it does all the work for you. Those are two things that people love to have. Um, and then the done for you meal plans. Um, I, I've seen just over and over and over again, these work pretty damn well for upsells in, in the health niche. Uh, they're not as good as supplements because you can't get the average order value that you can get for supplements. Like you could sell five bottles of a supplement for $200. You're never gonna be able to sell meal plans for 200 bucks. So in the end, the supplement's gonna win simply because the average order value is a lot higher. All right, so does that make sense? That makes sense to everybody? Great, all right, let's move to the next one. We're gonna show some more examples. All right, so this is one from the survival niche. On the front end, a customer bought a three-day pack of survival food for $14.95. So this is like one of those little three-day packs where it's like if shit hits the fan and the apocalypse is here and you need to live for three days, you can live off this three-day pack of survival food. Which upsell would be the best fit? 
So option A is a package of 53 different guides on crucial survival strategies, all about canning food, surviving storms, how to filter your water, stuff like that. Option B is a larger three month supply of survival food. Option C is a water filter that allows you to drink water from any source, like a lake, a river, a pool. Uh, and option D would be a course on how to grow all the food you need in your own backyard. Pop it in the chat what you think would win. I'm, going, I'm looking for the answers. So we got B, C, B. Andrew just said maybe A. B, C. So kind of all over, the, all over the board, but a lot of people saying B. The answer is B, uh, and by a large, large margin. Uh, this one is actually my old company, um, uh, Patriot Health Alliance. Our sister company was called uh, Four Patriots, which was the biggest survival company. This is an actual offer they, uh, they ran for a long, long time, where the customer bought the three-day pack of survival food for 14 bucks on the front end, then the three-month supply, which shockingly was uh how much was the three months supply? Oh, i want to say at least at least 500 bucks possibly even more uh was the upsell and this is actually was very eye-opening to me because i never thought you'd be able to go from a 14 dollars product to a 50 or a 500 dollars product uh but they did it and they did it really damn well and it made it work so the big thing here is this is one of the kind of pillars that i do with upsells which is selling them more of the same it works really really well with physical products. Um, stuff like this, where it's like a bigger package of what you just bought, is literally like the exact ripoff of the old McDonald's supersize me deals, where you bought your burger and you bought your Coke and you bought your fries, and they're like, would you like to supersize that for an extra, whatever, two bucks? Uh, and you literally just got bigger versions of everything you bought. That's exactly what this is, and like I said, it works really, really well, especially in with physical products. By the way, is this uh, helpful to you guys, me showing the examples like this? Awesome. Great, all right, let's do the next example. So on the front end, a customer bought a $39 book on fixing their credit score. Um, which upsell do you think would be the best fit to sell them after they bought this book? So. A is an advanced version of the credit score book they bought on the front end. So this one's gonna have more tips, more tricks on fixing their credit. B is a software that fixes your credit for you. C is an info product on how to make an extra $400 a week with odd jobs. D is a subscription service that updates you on your credit score each month. All right, I'm gonna check through the uh, answers. So a lot of answers for B, uh, a couple for D. Yeah, so you guys are dead on with this one. The answer is B, and similar to the other ones, it is by an absolute wide margin. Um, uh, Andrew, yeah, actually, that's actually a very important point. So Andrew said option A is the supersize. So supersize tends to work really well with physical products. When it comes to like information, uh, people don't really tend to want more of the same. Uh, or they, they don't want like a bigger version of what they just bought. Like, if I'm teaching you how to fix your credit, you actually don't want 80 more pages on how to fix your credit. That's just, you, you want your, your credit done for you or you want it done faster or something like that. So the reason the software that they sell on this, this is an actual offer that uh, a guy in our mastermind runs that is running like a $50 million business right now. Uh, they created their own software that does a lot of the work for fixing your credit for you. Um, so literally you got a bunch of people who are like, Oh yeah, I want to fix my credit. And they realize how much damn work it is. And I was like, here, we have this software that does like 90% of the work for you. Uh, super, super smart offer. Um, and it is kicks ass. I mean, it kicks ass on a lot of different niches. It's an example of one of the pillars that I teach, uh, which is called literally done for you upsells. So those are three different kinds of upsells I wanted to show you. And then I'm going to kind of give you a breakdown of, these are the three that I go to all the time uh, when, I, when I'm creating upsells. So like I said, number one is more of the same, which is the supersize me. Basically the three day pack of survival food, you upsell to the three month survival food. This works really, really well, like I said, for physical products. Uh, it works in the supplement niche. Um, 
it actually works in uh, subscriptions for like newsletters. It works for SaaS stuff. Like if you subscribe for a monthly, then I upsell you on the yearly. Uh, that type of stuff works really well. Done for you uh, is the second one. Anytime you can do something for people, people will gobble that up and buy it like crazy. Uh, so like we said with the credit one, you get the book on how to fix your credit score and then we're gonna upsell you the software that actually does all the work for you. That is a killer, killer offer. If you can figure out a way to make uh, something that does whatever your song does it for them, uh, you're gonna have a home run upsell. The last one is literally just get faster results. Uh, and the easiest way to explain this one usually is with uh, weight loss. So you buy a diet, you buy the keto diet, whatever, and then you upsell the meal plan or the supplements that are going to help you accelerate those results. So those are my three go-to. These are probably the three most proven upsells. They work every single time if you do them correctly. Um, so there's really no need to try to come up with something new when it comes to upsells. Like if you can fit your upsell into these frameworks, uh, you're going to have a home run. Does that make sense to everybody before we move on to the next one? Great. Let's, uh, by the way, let's take like two minutes. Um, what was the biggest, like I said, I feel guilty that I didn't pay for this going. <laughs> what was the biggest thing you took away from that first part? Feel free to pop it in the chat right now. Dan said, done for you on info products. Jeremy said, don't get too creative. What people want, depending on the product you're selling. Yep. More of the same doesn't work as well with info. Yep. Congruence of upsell and purchase to get faster, easier. Awesome. Yep. Awesome. So let, let's go on to this next one. Actually, we'll, we'll do this kind of a big takeaway here that I just want to reemphasize. So getting the product right is literally, like I said, the key, it's the secret to, if you want to go from like that 10% or 15% conversion rate, you want to get up to a 40% conversion rate or a 50% conversion rate, which I've done multiple times for both myself and clients. The key is getting the product right. Um, all the other stuff in terms of copy, and uh, headlines and price and all that type of stuff. It all matters, but it all comes after getting the product right. The product is by far the most important part. Cool, so let's go to upsell mistake number two. By the way, there's, there, there's only two upsell mistakes in this. I, I wanted to narrow it down because these two are the biggest, the biggest ones by far. They, they move the needle the most. So I want to really focus on these two and make sure you guys uh, truly understand them. So. Upsell mistake number two, I wrote an email about this the other day, and it's what I call having T-Rex arms, and I'm gonna explain that. So basically, T-Rex arms is when you're kind of shorting the sale. Uh, for example, you think the person's already sold because they bought something, so you don't sell as much. And I call it like, you think of the T-Rex, like you see in this picture, he's got these little arms, he's like not really fully going after the sale. He's just kind of like pulling his punches and like holding back. Um, this is a super common mistake that I see in upsells where people just assume that the person is already sold because they bought something on the front end and they assume they don't have to sell as hard on the upsell. Uh, millions and millions of dollars in testing uh, for both me and my clients has proven this is completely wrong. Um, and I'm, I'm going to show you a couple examples of this. So. This is one, one of uh, an example I did for my buddy Dave Sinek and uh, Mike Geary. So they have, a, they have an offer called Paleo Sweets, which is a dessert cookbook um, that is full of like paleo recipes on how to make like cakes and brownies and cookies that are all paleo friendly. So this offer was crushing for a long, long, long time. Uh, and then it started to fade. Like all, every offer does after a while, like it starts fading and you got to keep bumping the average order value up and refreshing it and redoing the sales page to kind of keep it running. So they were basically losing a dollar 25 on every sale that they made. Um, and in order to be able to buy more traffic, they needed to get their average order value up. So, they came to me and asked me if I would come and take a look at their upsells and see if I could fix some of their upsells and uh, beat some of their upsells so we could get the average order value up a little higher. 
So here is what, I want to break this down. I want to show you exactly what the first upsell originally looked like. And this upsell was not bad by any means. Uh, it was written by a good copywriter. The copy on it's not bad. And I want you to know, I'm inspired by you. I'm impressed by your commitment, not just to feel you, but to your health and well-being. You see, I appreciate firsthand how difficult it can be to relearn some of your eating habits so they can support you 1,000% healthy children. Those first few baby steps, those first few meals, have such a huge implication for the health of you and your family. That's why I want to share something with you something absolutely essential to help you effortlessly transition to a 24 seven paleo lifestyle. So a couple of things stuck out to me right away. The people just bought this dessert book and she's really not talking about the dessert book at all. Um, that stood out to me right away. One thing, this video is only about three or four minutes long. So I'm going to show you the one that I did is actually much longer. Um, and then if you look down here, um, actually I'll, I'll go back to go back to the other one and I'll, so basically the, like I said the big thing is I didn't think the intro really matched like what it should be um, and then also the like I said the, the length of it was not it wasn't it, they had the T-Rex arms on this they weren't selling hard enough they literally just thought people would take the upsell uh, because they were offering it so let's look at the one I rewrote for them Kelsey again, and I want to congratulate you on making a great decision and creating a copy of my new book, Paleo Sweets. Now, make sure you stay on this page and you don't accidentally close the page or hit the back button in your browser. You're in the right place. Right now, the guys in the warehouse are getting your book packed up so we can ship it out to you. But before we do that, I have a very important question to ask. How would you like to get even more tasty paleo recipes to help you slim down, look younger, and have the vibrant energy you had 10 or 20 years ago? Sounds great, right? So one thing I want to point out, and this is a huge, huge mistake that a lot of people make. Did you see how at the beginning, that first like minute or so, I really addressed uh, the idea that they just bought something, they made a great decision. Um, and it talk about like, we're getting the order packed up. We're going to ship it out to you. That is something most people don't do. And it's a huge mistake because people who are buying this, especially the people who are buying this, it's like 50, 60, 70 year old people who don't buy a lot of stuff online. They're used to when they buy something online that they just land on a confirmation page like they would on Amazon. So they're landing on a page like this. And all of a sudden you're like trying to sell them something else right away. And their anxiety is just like through the roof. They're like, did I click the wrong button? Is something broken? Am I going to get my order? Like what's going, that, that's literally what's running through their head. So that whole first like minute right there, I'm just nailing, like you're in the right place. We're getting your order packed up. We're going to ship it out to you. Like er everything's going, uh, as planned. And then I slowly transition to getting into pitching them the next product. Does everybody see that? Pop, pop a yes in the chat. If you kind of understood that. Awesome. Yep. So you, uh, this is why I kind of, my upsell method, I kind of named it the congratulate and sell method. So you start off by congratulating them on the purchase and you really just, um, you really just, I don't know, like calm down that anxiety and that stress that they have. And no, that idea is not age specific. I do it on every single, uh, every single upsell that I do, no matter what the demographic is. So I'll, I'll run it for a couple more minutes to kind of show um, well, where it goes. Deal. If you love food and you love eating like I do, then you know that eating delicious foods like barbecue chicken, creamy pasta dishes, or hot fluffy pancakes will probably leave you feeling bloated, sluggish, and have you packing on the pounds in no time. But what if there was a way to eat all of these tasty comfort foods while actually slimming down and nourishing your body? I know that might sound too good to be true, so let me explain. After hundreds of requests from Paleo Sweets customers, I decided to bury myself in the kitchen and test the simplest, most delicious, paleo-friendly versions of your favorite dinners, 
snacks, and breakfast. I'm talking about dishes like mouth-watering steak fajitas, piping hot banana nut muffins, taco stuffed zucchini boats, creamy chicken alfredo, and even my famous sloppy joes with crispy sweet potatoes. After nearly six months of testing these recipes with my family and friends, I'm excited to announce that these recipes have been put into a series of three cookbooks called the Paleo Recipe Collection. With the simple recipes in the Paleo Recipe Collection, so I'm not going to show the whole thing. Uh, I'll pop the link into the chat if you want to go back and watch this one over. But um, a couple of the big things I want to point out here. So the big changes I made, like I said, that original video was something like three minutes, maybe four minutes long. The one I wrote is, I think 12 minutes might have been even longer. Um, but you really, really, really want to do the full selling process. Like I said, that first one had the T-Rex arms. It wasn't going through the full selling process. So that same sale that I would kind of do to make the sale on the front end, I'm doing that on the upsell as well. Um, then the other big change I made was the intro that connects to the book they just bought. I want to calm their anxiety. I want to make, make them realize that they're in the right place and that everything's kind of going according to plan. And then the last change I made was, I switched it to just video, so you kind of saw a copy on that page. You saw a copy below it. That's just because I've been to this page before. Um, if I just show, if you just showed up here, there there wouldn't be any of that stuff uh, below it. It would be just the video. So those are the three big changes I made, and I'll show you the result here. Um, like I said, this was for a free plus shipping offer. So the average order value went from $16.50 to $19.20. That's an increase of $2.70 per order, which if you're not familiar with free plus shipping offers, that is a massive, massive jump. Um, and I, I can tell you from uh, knowing them firsthand and how this kind of offer went, uh, it allowed this offer, which was basically dying, to run for another year and a half. Um, in that year and a half, I think they brought in over 200,000 customers. So that's 200,000 buyers that they would not have had uh, if they didn't redo the upsells and, and get this offer kicking ass again. So uh, that, that's a huge, huge result. Um, like I said, came from literally just switching that first upsell and getting it a little more dialed in. So, and then with the new average order value, they, they actually, they were down somewhere around 200 sales a day at the time, but they were able to scale it up to around 1500 sales a day. So huge, huge, huge changes there. Susan's like, can you show the slide of the changes you made again? Yep. So longer video. Like I said, my video is about 12 minutes. Theirs was about three. Uh, the intro that connected to the book they just bought, uh, that first minute or so that congratulates them, tells them they're in the right place, tells them their order's being packed up, tells them that they made a great decision, all that type of stuff. I'm doing that to calm their anxiety. And then the last one was really just getting rid of the copy underneath the video and forcing them just to watch uh, the actual video. So like I said, that resulted in a huge boost, but that's the power of dialing in an upsell. Um, it really can't be stated enough how, if you have mediocre upsells or if you have bad upsells, getting them dialed into where they're converting at 35, 45, even 50% is such a game changer. Cause I mean, the average order value shoots up, you can buy more traffic, you can compete with the big boys. Um, all that stuff just absolutely crushes. Uh, that, that's, like I said, that's, that's the power of getting the upsells dialed in. So to recap kind of the two things that we just went over. Uh, number one, the product on your upsell has to be congruent with what they bought on the front end. The most important part by far. Uh, if you don't have that right, I would say you're basically just putting lipstick on a pig. Uh, because you can, if you have a bad offer or if you have a mediocre offer, you can improve it but you can only improve it so much because it's just not an appealing enough offer. Uh, when you have a really appealing offer that people really want, you can literally get, like I said, conversion rates like 45%, 50% on your first upsell. And then the second one is you have to go through the full selling process. You cannot have the T-Rex arms. You can't try to do a two minute video and sell somebody, sell somebody on what you want to sell them. Um, people try it. And like I said, this is the mistake that really, really smart marketers make. I mean, I'm talking people running $200 million companies uh, make this mistake. Uh, and a lot of them I go in and fix their upsells and I get them huge boosts simply by making their upsell longer. That's literally all I do to it. Um, 
So yeah, you don't want to you don't want to have the T Rex arms on that on that upsell. You really want to go through the full sales process. So this is my last slide. So basically, just to recap, um, there's a bunch of stuff you can do with upsells. I mean, we could talk about upsells for days. It could be its own three day conference. But the two things that move the needle more than anything is the two things that I just talked about. And if you literally get those two things right, if you get those two things right with basic C average copy, you will convert still better than 95% of the competitors. I can guarantee you that. All right, so let's do, um, let's do, let's do some Q and A. Um, Stephen, I know you've been paying attention to the comments a little more than I have. Yeah, there's uh, quite a bit. I mean, Matthew Katz just asked, do you ever add a second or third upsell on a given offer? Or is that too annoying for the prospect? And I mean, the answer is yeah, for sure. But you focus primarily on the first upsell more than anything because it's like, that's where the biggest needle mover is, right? Yeah, by far. I mean, the first upsell is where you're going to make 75 to 80% of your uh, upsell money. Um, so I put the most, definitely the most, kind of impact on that one, all my focus onto that one. I, I don't even play around with the second, third upsell until my first one's hitting like 40% conversion rate. Yeah, it makes sense. And then a couple of people have asked sort of about the difference between video and text and how you use video. Uh, and, you know, they've asked if like switching to video made a difference and I'll, I'll let you answer that. Yeah, so they, video definitely gives you a good bump. Um, you will get more complaints uh, by having like a longer VSL, but uh, the video definitely gives you a better conversion rate. And in the end, uh, you're gonna make a lot more money with video. So yeah, I do recommend doing video. And some, uh, Panit has, um, sorry if I mispronounced her name, Panit, Panit. Um, if there's like a sweet spot for length, like I know some people do look at that cause it's like you talk about doing longer upsells. So then they're like, should I do a, a 25 minute? Is that too long? Should I, you know, and I know it's, it's going to be subjective, but like, is there any kind of sweet spot that people should look at? So the majority of mine, tend, this one actually is a little shorter than what I usually do. Mine tend to land between 15 and 20 minutes. Uh, but a lot of that also depends on what you're selling. So if you're selling, if you sell them like a keto info product on the front end, and then you're trying to sell them on your keto supplement, you're probably going to need 20 minutes to explain all that. Um, if you do, if you sold them, supplements on the front end and then you're just selling them more of the same supplement in the first upsell you could get away with 12 13 14 minutes on that so you usually need longer if you're you're selling them on bigger stuff i mean some of the best upsells i know that convert like crazy are 20 plus minutes so don't be afraid to make them longer cool and i thought ryan Connolly had a good question with um yeah, would you use the same concept if you're cross selling them a different product instead of selling them more of the same or I mean, you're basically cross-selling a different product there at that upsell, so kind of answers it, right? Yeah, I mean, there's really no situation where you're gonna where you're gonna do better by writing like shorter copy. For sure. Um, Josh's is a little bit. Let me, let me read this one out loud. So, so I sell merchant services. It comes with equipment and an app market with tools to help them run their business more efficiently. I'm thinking a good upsell would be more apps like the ones we would recommend anyway when they use our service, things like apps that help them manage stuff, staff better, file taxes with the click of a button. Does that make sense? Um, I guess if I'm understanding that question correctly, then maybe if it's like a bundle, I guess. So if you're, I guess I have to understand what they're buying first. Actually. So, yeah. so are they- um, I'm a little confused are, with the buying. Yeah, Josh, if you can clarify that a little bit, I'd love to answer that question for you. So um, one of the ones in here was, do you think going from a live talking head to a text and static image made a difference? I actually do not know. Um, usually the talking heads actually usually do better. So uh, I, I would be more apt to, to do the talking head. Andrew, I'm not sure what you're asking with the call to action. I mean, it's, it's the same as in a normal sales letter. Like the call to action is click the button down at the bottom to, to add it to your order. Uh, I got John, um, John Cars, uh, I think he probably messaged me this, probably just to me too, but he asked what kind of conversion rates do you aim for for the second and third upsell? Um, if I can get around 15, 
percent on like a second or third, I'm super happy with that. Cool. And then John, you know, uh, McDermott said, do longer videos work only because you can include more proof elements or maybe also because they're more, they've invested more of their time. I couldn't tell you why they work, but it's just like, why, do, why does longer copy work on the front end? I mean, you're, you're giving more information and more story and more proof and more everything to people who really want it. Uh, so, I mean, the same thing that applies to a front end offer. If I wrote a four page sales letter and Stefan wrote a 16 page sales letter, the 16 one's probably going to win the majority of the time. Uh, same thing happens with upsells. Claudio asked a good question. How much input do you have on the BSL design uh, or do you leave that up to the graphic team? I usually will just have them do a ugly kind of PowerPoint video one like this, just to kind of like test it. Uh, that client, um, they tend to do everything a little more fancier. Um, so I just got, I mean, they're really good marketers and know what they're doing. So I have no problem leaving that up to them, but I, I did have like final say on stuff. There's a couple things that I had them change that uh, I didn't really like, but yeah, I definitely have a final say on how it looks and all that. Uh, Jeff, Arbuckle asked about with supplements, is it better to sell more of the exact same product on upsell one that you sell on the main sale, or is it better to sell something congruent, but different, better, that allows you to sell more? Uh, for me personally, I think you'd agree, Justin, it's usually better to sell more of the same. So I will just, for me, it's usually like a six bottle upsell and then a three bottle downsell as my first upsell. And then I'll sell them congruent products afterwards. Um, that just generally is going to get the best take rates uh, by far. Even if they bought six bottles, they'll buy six more bottles. That's the thing, right? They bought six bottles. It means they have money to spend and they're like really into it. So you're like, hey, buy six more. And they're like, okay. Um, and even I, I see all the time people buy one bottle on the front end, but you give them a better price for six bottles as the first upsell. And they're like, okay, yeah, I guess I should go and buy six. Um, so the only thing sometimes to look at there is just keep an eye on refund rates. If for some reason people feel like they're getting, you know, 12 bottles and it feels like too much, but generally almost always it's better to sell more of the same. So one of these questions I really want to address because it's super, super smart. So Susan asked, do you recommend thinking of the first upsell first and then working backwards from that for the main offer? Absolutely. Uh, all of this should be thought out before you even create an offer and before you create a product. You do not want to be the person who puts out a product and has a great front end product and you can't figure out what the hell there's no like good upsell fit for it. I've seen this happen too many times. And the best way to really do it is figure out, once you figure out a system that works, so like in supplements, like Stefan just said, everybody who crushes in supplements know if we put out our normal supplement offer and then the first upsell, we literally just sell them more bottles of what they just bought. If they bought three, we'll sell them three more. If they bought six, we'll, buy, we'll sell them six more. That works over and over and over again. So if you're smart, you just keep pumping out offers that fit that template. So if an offer doesn't fit that template, then you don't, you, know, you honestly don't even do it because this is like what you see like Guthy Ranker who crushes on infomercials. Every single uh, facial cream or whatever they're selling fits the exact same template. It's like, we need this celebrity, we need the uh, goop has to work for like a month and then it has to cost X amount and they have to take it for so many months. Like it's all the exact same formula over and over again. And the only thing they're changing out is the celebrity and kind of the mechanism of what it actually does. Um, they found a formula. That's the best thing to do. Cause once you find the form, finding the formula that works is really freaking hard. So once you do it, like it's smart to just keep pumping out offers that fit that formula over and over and over again. Yeah. I think this is an important lesson in general. I mean, even with everything with copyright and marketing, it's like not trying to reinvent the wheel. Like I don't get a soapbox on that, but even we see those sales letters and people not I trying to like, kind of like go off of like the a proven formula or not like wanting to like, you know, swipe or model off of things that are working and the same thing with upsells. And it's like, you get to be creative with your messaging and ideas, but like you just, there's no reason to like, try to like reinvent the wheel when you have like the template that works and the exact same thing with, with upsells and what Justin's saying here. Yeah. Colin asks, what's the sweet spot for price on the first upsell relative to the core product? Like I said, this is always going to vary. Um, like that survival one I showed you, it went from 14 bucks to 500 bucks uh, and that worked really well. Um, if you're doing an ebook for 39 bucks, you can go up to like, I don't know, like 97 is probably what I would start with somewhere around there. If 
you're doing a free plus shipping book that's like nine bucks, I'd probably maybe like 49 would be my highest that I would kind of start with. Obviously, testing price is a huge, huge thing, but so once you have the offer correct, testing price is probably the next thing I would actually I would actually do. Well, Max asked, is there a shift if a client base is younger and not older? You know, for me personally, I, I think, yeah, you always have to test stuff, but even like with um, V Shred and Sculpt Nation, one of their, like the, the burn supplement I, I did for them, which is like a younger demographic, they're on Instagram, all that stuff. Uh, I wrote like a longer upsell for them based on what I learned from Justin and it still did really well, even though and mine was kind of overkill. I think mine was like 18 minutes long when probably didn't need to be that long, but I'd never done it before. And I was just modeling off of what Justin did, but even that worked really well. And that was with a younger demographic for sure. No, Dennis, Dennis, definitely not. Dennis said, is upsell always a higher price uh, than like the front end? But no, a lot of times it's a lower price. It just depends. I mean, well, I got the relative value too. So for, like with Nutra, for example, if I'm selling you a six bottle package and it's like, you know, $49 per bottle on the front end, and maybe the first upsell is a six bottle package at $29 per bottle. So, um, you know, it's, it's like less than the front end. Uh, it just depends on what, if you're going like from a low price point thing, like a $7, you know, kind of um, free plus shipping, like our book funnel type thing. And then you're going to try and up something like a $97 like coaching program or like something like that, you, you go up. But there's also for a lot of like physical goods, especially you may, if your price point's already pretty high at the beginning, then I found it's actually better to kind of like stay around that price point or go a little bit lower, but you can make it work any different way, but it's definitely not a hard rule where you always go up um, or down really. You have to test it. And Paul, yeah, I'll ask you Paul too. Do you follow up email marketing to the upsells the customers didn't take? Yeah, when you can, um, we, we, I, I've tended to do that and it actually works really well. Like for the blood sugar one I've talked about before, which is GS85, we have a sequence where if they didn't take certain upsells, like it's one of the first things we promote to them and like we get a very high take rate with that. Patrick, what AOV, with AOV, what percentage of the revenue is from the front end offer versus upsell funnel revenue? That's tough to say, but I guess like I'd look at it like maybe, I don't know, 20 to 40%. Would you agree with that, Justin? I mean, it's kind of, it kind of varies. It depends on the offer, I guess. Yeah, I, I, I can't think off the top of my head, but it's probably a good rule of thumb. David, I think I answered that. If we didn't, you put the upsells, yeah. The upsells would be after the checkout. So after they order and hit submit, then they go to the first upsell, second upsell, third upsell, uh, et cetera. So, and if you're on Shopify, there's apps that do it. But generally, you know, if you're on like a CRM, uh, you know, you're able to put that in anyway. JB, I'm saying, so say your AOV is $200, maybe like, yeah, maybe like 20 to $40 if that's coming from the upsells as an example. Yeah. Uh, if we missed any questions and you want them answered, feel free to pop them in now. There's, there was a bunch of them that came in, so. Yeah, Jake said, is it smart to have a TSL that goes into more depth below the VSL? That's kind of what you do, Justin, right? But you wait until there's a call to action video that says, hey, so scroll down and, you know, click the package. And then you have, it's like a long TSL, but there's there's some copy that supports it, correct? Yeah. yeah. Cool. Claudio asked, if you're selling services and you lead with an information product on the front end, can the upsell be getting the actual equipment sales call? Sure. I mean, if that's where you're going to make all your money, then yeah, definitely. Scott asked, when you drop the copy and button from the delay under the VSL, usually when we mention the price, so if the video is 20 minutes long and we start talking about the price at like 15 minutes in, we drop, drop it then. Uh, Dan asked, is there a quick formula for writing up sales or is it exactly the same as the front end? Very, very similar as the front end. Um, we, we, have a, we teach my method in the copy accelerator group. Uh, I don't have any of that out kind of in the public, but yeah, we do have a method for doing it. Why do you think Gundry get away with having such short upsells? Is it due to the authority? Seems like T-Rex to me. Yep, this is what I was saying. A lot of really smart companies uh, do their up, leave a lot of money on the table. The upsells, Gundry's definitely one of them. Uh, they could be making a lot more money. On a supplement upsell, any idea on the take rate on a single package versus one three six package options? Uh, you're almost always going to do better offering the one three six because you're going to get the higher AOB. Uh, you don't want to look at the 
take rate you want to look at, which one produces more average hour value. That's if they're buying like a, well, it depends what they're buying on the front end. I, I'm assuming they're buying like an info product on the front end. If they're buying an info product, I would offer the one for six. I think he's in on the supplement. Oh, so yeah, I'm sorry, right. Yeah, so when I answered earlier, I was thinking about of a supplement. On a supplement funnel, I just give them like the one package offer, but um, yeah, info product is different for sure. I want to answer Jake's questions, working with Matt Harmon on a 30 day book offer that comes with an ebook that walks clients through the process. Would a good upsell be a physical copy of the book? What's the process? process? Yeah, that's a good question. I mean, that, 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 that is one way. I, I've done those upsells before that work. Like people buy digital and then the upsell is like the physical version. That, that definitely works. Um, and you can usually add more bonuses and stuff to it as well. And just a live chat on checkout page. Yep. Definitely helps. Uh, Scott, no, uh, on the first upsell, I, I make, I force them to watch it. Um, there's no, they can't get out of there without clicking out of the page. There's no like, no thank you button that's shown the whole time type thing. Jake, so if you, you know, Jake mentioned that the process is like a weight loss challenge thing. I, you know, if it were me though, so going back to, if you can do a 30 day book that comes with an ebook or it's a, you know, it comes with an ebook that tells them how to lose weight over 30 days. Then I, the better upsell than the physical book would be weight loss supplements. Um, not like the physical copy of the book's not really great. I mean, if anything, like you can maybe, that'd be a place to maybe test like a, um, a bump on the checkout page, which is like, yes, send me a physical product for another seven ninety five. But I would, again, if you're going to do an, a, a, a little box like that on the checkout, you still need to test that because sometimes you get the bump and you think, Oh man, this is great. But then for whatever reason, when people take that, they're less inclined to take the upsells because they're like, Oh, I already took this or I already spent money on this or whatever. So it would be tested. But if you can do a supplement, uh, I think that would be your ideal way to do that. Yeah. You'd be better off if you want to offer the physical copy, you'd be better off on the front end. You put them right next to each other, the digital and the physical option, and they can pick which one they want. Usually the digital or usually the physical you charge them like, I don't know, 10 bucks more to cover the shipping type thing. Uh, that tends to work well. A lot of people run offers like that. And then, like you said, yeah, the first upsell would be the supplement. All right, guys. Uh, last one we're going to answer here. So Susan said, I've seen Frank and Ian have transcripts of the video available that are offered if the person goes to close the page because they don't like watching video. I, I, I do that on the front end, but not on upsells. Um, yeah. Might work on upsells. I don't know. I've never actually tried it, but cool. So that'll conclude the Q&A part. Um, pop something in the chat if you got Actually, pop, pop the biggest thing in the chat that you took away from this whole call. I'd be really curious to kind of hear, hear what that is from each of you. And by the way, while, while you're doing that, we still, uh, we're gonna have a giveaway at the end of the call. So if you want to stick around and hear that. So Scott said the delay under the upsell video, T-Rex arms, getting the upsell product right. Keep selling even after they purchase. Start with just one upsell. Uh, don't neglect them. They're critical. T-Rex arms. Longer videos. Longer. Sell harder. Sell the right offer. No upsell. Awesome. Uh, calming down the user when they up when they hit the upsell page. Yep, it's super big. Upsells need to make their life easier. Yep. No shortcuts on the sale. Yep. Congruent upsell makes bank. Awesome. Awesome. Great. So yeah. Um, honestly, like I said, if you guys simply implement any of the stuff that you learned, I have a feeling you're going to see a pretty big bump. Um, so last thing before we, before we end off, uh, Steph and I are going to share a little bit about, uh, our upcoming copy accelerator mastermind. This isn't like a hard beat you over the head pitch, but um, if you liked what we shared today, um, 
our event coming up at the end of February is this exact same type of information. Um, so you're, you're going to have people like me, Stefan, uh, Tyler Bramlett, um, Nick Daniel. I mean, literally the best marketers in the world are going to be at the Copy Accelerator event. Uh, Jay Diebel, who actually runs that credit secrets offer that I talked about, is going to be doing a whole presentation specifically on upsells. Um, and then, who else am I missing? Mark and Jeff Stockman. Uh, sorry, Mark Stockman and Jeff Radich. Uh, Chris Adad. This is the sales page for our event. Like I said, coming up at the end of February. Uh, by the way, who on the call is coming to the event? Feel free to pop something in the chat if you're coming. Scott is, yep, I know you're coming, talk to Scott. Um, <laughs> who else is coming? We got, I think as of now, we have about 145 people coming to the event. Um, yeah, wrote, something like, even a little bit more than that, I think it's over 150 now. Okay, so I want to show you the speakers real quick at the event. Um, like I said, it's February 26th to the 28th in Las Vegas. This is our actual event for our mastermind, which is the Copy Accelerator Mastermind. The people in the group uh, are all gonna be there. So this is our group, like I said, a group that's $30,000 a year. Uh, and you can buy a ticket to sit in on this event for 29.50, that's 2,950 bucks. And it's a two and a half day event. This is a high, high level event. This is not Funnel Hacking Live. This is not Rah Rah Tony Robbins event. This is high-end tactical, uh, talking about stuff like we talked about on the call today. Uh, this is for serious marketers doing serious amount of money. Um, so if you want to, uh, if you want to come to this event, it'll be right up your alley. Um, <laughs> TNC is not till the end of March, so this does not conflict with that. Uh, so here's a lineup of the speakers. Uh, Stefan and I are gonna be speaking on day one. We're gonna go over the eight biggest mistakes that prevent your offer from converting on cold traffic. This is basically uh, the epitome of what we've seen from work looking inside literally like 220 different funnels over the last year and the same mistakes come up over and over and over again that prevent offers from converting on cold traffic. So we're going to talk about that. Uh, Stefan's going to, has this amazing presentation where he's literally just going to reel off uh, all of these huge split test wins. He's going to break them down, show you what won, what didn't win. Uh, and you can literally just rip these off and implement them on your offers, whether they're your own offers or clients if you're a copywriter. Tyler Bramlett uh, is currently averaging like 2,300 sales a day for his fitness offers. He's gonna break down kind of the whole process of how they're doing that. Uh, super, super smart guy, one of, the, one of the smartest marketers I know. Jay, who I talked about, they're running an infomercial right now with Larry King. Uh, they also do online stuff that uh, complements their infomercial. Jay is probably the smartest marketer that nobody's ever heard of. Uh, the guy knows his shit up and down and uh, he's actually a mastermind member as well and uh, I talked to him about speaking because he does some pretty amazing stuff with his upsells and he's going to kind of spill the secret sauce during his talk. Jason Katasi, uh, master at Facebook ads, has spent over $100 million worth of traffic in the last few years. Uh, cool thing about Jason is he's in like every single vertical, like he knows what's working from health to he sells children's books to literally like quizzes to lead gen, like a guy knows like every damn category. So that's really cool to see because it's not just one specific niche. Matt Harmon spoke at our last event, got a huge round of applause. Everybody loved Matt, so we invited Matt back. Uh, he's gonna talk specifically about native traffic. Matt spends about $60,000 a day on native traffic. Uh, he's gonna break down what's working right now for native. Mark Stockman and Jeff Radich, uh, another two members of our mastermind who are going to be talking about the five biggest average order value boosters that allow them to buy more customers than their competitors. Mark and Jeff are building a, a real force in the uh, health niche with their company, Natural Health Sherpa. Um, I don't know what they're at right now. I'd say somewhere between 50 and $100 million is somewhere where they're at. Um, I think they said they, like 70, 75 million last night or something. Okay. Yeah. It's all right. You know, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> Not bad. <laughs> Not bad. Uh, but yeah, they're going to be talking about uh, what they're doing to, they, they buy more traffic than a lot of people because they, they, they have a lot of stuff that they do in terms of average order value that most people aren't doing. Uh, so they're able to buy traffic that people, most people can't buy. They're going to share that. Chris Haddad, the uh, legendary copywriter, writes probably the best stories that I've ever seen in copy. Chris is going to be coming and sharing kind of his 
storytelling formula. Uh, he's got an offer right now that's doing like, I think like 600 sales a day in the dating niche. Uh, he's gonna, I think he's gonna break down a little bit of that. He's also gonna share his story, how he went from basically a shitty mediocre copywriter working on jobs from like Upwork and cold calling, literally like local clients to now a copywriter who gets $30,000 routinely to write a sales letter. So that would be pretty cool. Um, so those are all the speakers. You'll get to meet everybody that's there. Uh, this is the sales page. Stefan, you want to pop a link in the chat for the sales page? I will, yeah. It is by I want to add. Go ahead, Justin. Sorry. It is by application only. Uh, you cannot just sign up and buy a ticket. In order to keep the kind of caliber of the room high, we do actually interview everybody to make sure you're a good fit. Um, and if you are a good fit, then uh, you can buy a ticket and you can bring up to two people. You, you obviously have to buy them tickets as well, but uh, the tickets for multiple guests are discounted. So a lot of business owners will bring their copywriter or they'll bring their head marketer or they'll bring a media buyer. Um, so if that's, if that's you, I would highly recommend doing that. Uh, the amount of value you are going to get out of this weekend, it's not, oh, not a weekend, it's a three-day event, is, to me, honestly, I, I don't see it at any other events. This is the kind of mastermind. Steph and I created it because it was the kind of event that we actually want to go to, uh, where it's super tactical, no fluff. You can walk out with six pages of notes of real shit to actually test and implement and make a bunch of money from. Um, anything you want to add, Stefan? Yeah, man, a couple a couple of things. I mean, so for example, with my split test talk, I've been, I have some stuff with that weight loss offer that's been doing, you know, several hundred runs a day and um, some really cool split tests on pricing and things like that I'm going to share. But I've also been crowdsourcing for mastermind members. So Allison Carpio, who's with Natural Health Sherpa, uh, we had a Zoom call. She shared three different split tests with me. I'm going to feature at least two of them. One was, um, Actually, two of them were like headers, things that they add to their checkout page. One increased their conversions, NEPC, no, let me see, increased the conversions by uh, 14% and their AOV by $2 just from putting the header on the checkout. And then the other one increased um, their conversions uh, by 16% on the checkout. And you can combine those two things. Uh, Jonathan Boyd from our mastermind, he did basically one change to his upsell. And I'm talking like a couple lines of copy. It's crazy. And it took, I've, got, I've got the notes here from it, from our conversation. It took... Uh, upsell one take rate, it increased it by 24%. He says 23.7% from one thing that he had to his upsell. And it's a pretty high volume. I think he's been crushing up his upsells. And then Jeremy Reeves has uh, shared with me something he did in the lead of some copy he wrote for Jimmy Sparling, who's also in the mastermind, that took the uh, conversion rate from 0.6, let me make sure I get this right, from 0.6% to 1.15% on cold traffic, which is like basically the, the difference alone of whether or not you can scale something to the moon or not. So if you're thinking about it from terms of like ROI or if like buying a ticket to our event makes sense, right? And you should go. It's like any one of those things can will just instantly pay for your ticket because whether you're an offer owner or you own a business, right? And you do those things and you're, you double your conversions or you increase them by 16%, increase your EPCs, like all of those things, you take one of those things and apply it to your business and you pay for your ticket. And if you're a copywriter and you can do that, if you can come in and look at a client's control and do something like what Jeremy did and basically double their conversions, then guess what? You're going to get way more clients. That client's going to keep hiring you and you paid for your ticket. So I want to mention that. And also back to the traffic side, it's like, you know, we talked about Jason Gutasi and Matt Harmon. It's like, okay, Jason Gutasi is the guy who scaled Lift Factor to 600 plus sales a day. He's running over hundred sales a day to BioHarmony right now, which is a weight loss offer I have. Matt Harmon's running like, you know, I don't know, 30 to 50 sales a day on data for BioHarmony and said he can get to 200 sales a day. So even if you're looking for traffic and you want people who can run your traffic on Facebook and on native, you should also come to the event because you will make relationships with those people that can then help you to like, you know, get your offer to scale and it'll be easy to get to scale because of what we're teaching you. So that's the hardest. I'm going to sell it, but like, it just is a lot of, there's a lot of reasons why you should get a ticket and you should apply. Even if you're on the fence about it, like I think you should just apply, do it now while it's on your mind because like, you know, otherwise you're going to maybe forget about it, but really like this is one of those events that actually can change your business and change your life and all that kind of stuff. And that was my best Russell Brunson that I can do, but it's just really true. I really believe that. Yeah. The last thing I want to add is the kind of the networking aspect of the event. Um, at an event like this, with, which is a small group, less than 200 people, you are going to get to personally meet uh, everybody there. And like I said, there's people from Agora Financial, Vishra, Natural Health Sherpa, Healthy Back Institute, Credit Secrets, um, 
literally all the biggest direct response companies in our niche that are doing serious volume. Uh, we have eight figure businesses. We have nine figure businesses. They're all going to be there. Uh, you'll be able to meet each one of them. Um, and from, like I said, from all across the board. So we have dating, we have survival, we have health, we have financial, uh, e-com. I mean, it's, it's literally all across the board. They're all going to be there. Um, one of the things Steph and I actually offer is if there's anyone there that you want to meet and you want an introduction to, uh, we will actually introduce them to you for, we'll introduce you to them as kind of a, just part of the event. Um, so like we have a cocktail party the first night to kick things off. Uh, if there's anybody there, you're like, Hey, I want to meet, uh, Jeff. Like, I think we could do a lot of business with them. Awesome. I'll introduce you to Jeff. Uh, you just come up and tap me on the shoulder and say, Hey, I want to meet this guy and Steph and I will make those introductions. So, uh, that's one of the things that we offer. And one thing I want to iterate too, if you're a freelance copywriter, this is the best event to come to, to pick up clients without a doubt, bar none. Um, last event we have, we have multiple freelance copywriters in our mastermind who walked out of the event with five or six new clients. Um, getting clients is the hardest part about being a freelance copywriter. And we literally have people had to turn jobs down because we have too many jobs. So if you want, if you're writing emails, if you're writing ads, if you're writing long form sales pages, BSLs, and you want more clients by spending the money to be in this room, you are shortcutting that and give, getting a huge ROI on it because, uh, they, we literally will have about a 15 minute session where, um, each business owner who has, who needs copywriters will stand up and say what they need. And you'll be able to go find each of them and literally talk to them and talk about how you, how you can help them. So it's a huge, huge value add for the, for the freelancers there. Uh, and literally like, the, I'm not even kidding. The business owners are just like handing out copywriting jobs. Um, so if, if you're in the room, yeah. And you, if you're in the room and you don't pick up a copywriting job, that means you're either a mute or you just didn't try because they're, they're giving them out for free. So, um, that would, that would be my last pitch. And then just, to, to talk about, I, we mentioned we we're going to give away a free gift. So if you apply to come to the mastermind today, uh, if you apply to come to the mastermind today and you actually sign up, you have to do both parts of it. You have to actually sign up and come to the event, uh, buy a ticket. You're going to get access to literally about, I don't know, $29,000 worth of free stuff here. Um, you get the recordings from the last event, which are right here. Uh, we're not selling these. We never have sold the event, uh, recordings because it's a private mastermind. So that's the only way you can see them. You get Stefan's uh, $12,500 copy event that he did in Vegas uh, two years ago. Literally breaks down his whole RMBC method. Uh, he had 55 people in the room who paid $12,500 to be there. You get all the recordings from that event. You get everything we have taught in Copy Accelerator already. Uh, so we have Facebook compliance stuff. We have four different or eight different calls on those, breaking down exactly what you can say, what you can't say on Facebook. We have uh, calls. And by the way, those compliance calls are bi-weekly too. And so if you if you sign up, you're gonna actually able to attend. We had one today. So people who bought a ticket already were actually able to like go to do, some of them are on that compliance call right now and they're getting answers about their Facebook compliance questions. Yep. So I, just worth noting. Uh, this one was really cool. We've done a couple calls on copywriting and business strategy. So if you're a freelancer and you want to learn how to do royalties or how to do like performance based deals or how to do retainer deals and actually make more money as a copywriter, uh, we have three different calls on that. You'll be able to watch each of those conversion boosters. This one literally was, if you implemented like three things from this, you'd make a shitload of money. This is probably, I think my favorite set of calls that we've ever done, basically just all these little things you can do to boost, boost your conversions. Um, email copy. We just kind of finished that one up and then you have all the main stuff on sales copy, which is the leads and headlines and Stefan's, uh, high money AOB closes, uh, big ideas, all that kind of stuff. So all this stuff, like I said, and then we have all the upsell stuff, which we talked about today. There's, there's even more stuff on the upsells. What we talked about today, you have access to all of this, like I said, $30,000 worth of, uh, knowledge, probably more. Um, so you get instant access to that if you come to the event. So you basically just have to apply for a ticket tonight uh, before, what did we say last time? I think midnight Pacific time. Yeah, I think that works. Yeah, we'll so keep that, it up. Yeah. So just fill out the application. Stephanie, can you post the link again? 
on that sales page, you'll see it. There'll basically be an orange button that says, um, click here to apply. I'll show it to you on the screen. Yep, click here to apply for a seat at the mastermind. You click that, it's gonna take you to an application. Like I said, the event's February 26th to the 28th in Vegas. Uh, the ticket is 29.50, that's 2,950 bucks. Just fill out the application and you'll do a call with uh, Blake from our team. It's a pretty short application, about 10 questions. Make sure you're a good fit. Blake will do a call for you with you. That's a short call, about 10 minutes. He's gonna make sure you're a good fit. If you are, uh, then you can get a ticket and we will see you at the event. Uh, if anyone has questions right now, specifically about the event or about getting a ticket or about applying, let's uh, pop it in the chat and stuff and I will, will answer those. You were so thorough. We may not have any. <laughs> Michael did, yeah, because Michael did say, you know, what if you have imposter syndrome? I know he was joking, but like, I want to be really clear on that. Like, even if you are, if you're shy or you have social anxiety or whatever it is, yeah, okay, cool. That's fine. I, I used to have imposter syndrome too. Um, but first of all, like, you do belong. And second of all, like, you know, tell us like that, right? If you came, if you came to the event and you're like, Hey, honestly, I'm kind of anxious. I don't know if I belong here. You let me know that in advance. So adjust in advance. And like, we will make sure to help give you some extra of the attention and love you need to make sure you get the most out of the event. And if you're like, I want to get clients, but I'm afraid to talk to people. Like, let me know. And I will actually help to facilitate those conversations and I'll help to kind of like, you know, take the lead on them at first so that you can ease in conversation and feel comfortable. Cause I do know that I'm, I'm really serious. And like a lot of people, I felt that way where I'm afraid to talk to potential clients. And I know that it could be a big fit, but I'm like, what if they just, I don't you know what if they, they don't think I'm worth it. What if I'm not worthy? What if they don't like me? And um, so seriously, yeah, if you guys, for anyone who comes who feels that way, you we're there for you uh, to make this event a success for you. I mean, we're not, this is like our names are on it, right? It's our mastermind. It's our event. And we are, we, we've changed so many people's lives or careers and their businesses through what we do. And we're going to keep doing that. But like, we have to, I don't want anyone to have a bad experience, man. I really, really mean it. So um, yeah, just know that. And then as Justin put to answer uh, Christopher Lee's question, yeah, the event is February 26th uh, through the 28th. So there's a cocktail reception the night of the 26th, open bar for three hours. It's an amazing mingling opportunity. 27th all day, hitting the heart of content, both from Justin and I, we've got uh, some of the speakers going, we've got the panel, uh, I don't know, I think the panel's on day two, but yeah, just a ton of stuff. Day three, more of that. Uh, the Facebook media buying native panel. Uh, we're going to be doing interactive things. Like it's just going to be an awesome, uh, awesome time. Any, uh, any other questions you guys have? If you want to go straight to the uh, application page, I'll post that in the chat. Cool. Well, if nobody else has a question, we'll wrap up this call. Uh, Appreciate you guys attending. I hope this was super valuable for you guys. Um, our intent with all these calls is to make it super valuable uh, so that you can take away one, two, three big things that you can actually implement in your business. And then uh, obviously we would love for you to come to the Copy Accelerator event, but if it's not for a fit, a fit for you, we understand. Um, so yeah, we're, we're gonna try to do another one of these calls next week. Um, but yeah, I'm glad you guys, uh, glad everybody showed up. And uh, we will probably post a replay of this in the Facebook group. So if you're not a member of Justin and Stuff and Talk Copy, uh, I would join that fa our Facebook group, and uh, you can see the replay in there. Anything else, Stuff? No, that's it. Thanks so much, guys. Appreciate it. See you guys.